Hi to all of you and welcome back uh, to this series of molecular biology lectures and this is the 13th lecture we will be focusing here on the post synthesis modification of nucleic acids the contents of this lecture will be DNA modifications and RNA modifications as happen during or after the synthesis process so we will begin this lecture Beginning with the modifications in uh, one type of a nucleic acid that is deoxyribonucleic acid. So as we are already uh, aware and I had already covered it in the replication process that during the replication process we need to have both uh, parental strands methylated for the replication to take place. And this methylation happens in the adenosine residue or adenine residue, residue in the GATC sequences in the RIC region. And until and unless this methylation happens in both of the adenine residues in, in the both strands, the replication cannot take place furthermore. So for the replication to take place and the initiation to happen, uh, the DNA molecule needs to be methylated at at least the adenosine residues of the ORIC region. And we know that methylation happens with the help of the DNA dependent uh, DNA polymerases and soon after the synthesis of a DNA molecule, one strand will be methylated and another will be unmethylated. So the methylation happens with the help of an uh, enzyme which are called as methylases. Apart from that, there are other kinds of methylations also and hence we can say that in uh, DNA the methylation usually takes place in two residues either in the cytosine or in the adenine. In cytosine, if the methylation happens, uh, it happens at C5 and N4 position and in adenine, it happens at N6 position. And uh, both of them are catalyzed by the methylases. So methylated cytosine are usually seen in the CPG islands. As uh, I have already this also covered that the CPG islands are uh, responsible for converting the uh, active DNA into a non-active DNA, active chromatin to a non-active chromatin, euchromatin to a heterochromatin and hence uh, suppresses the transcription and methylene adenosines as already said are helpful in regulating the replication initiation. This is the diagram which shows you when methylation happens particularly in the CPG islands of the DNA or the chromatin then the DNA uh, which is active under the unmethylated form undergoes change to become uh, condensed with the help of this methylation and methylation uh, transfers or transcribes the chromatin uh, into the non-active type of a chromatin that that means that the methylation uh, is critical for the conversion of the euchromatin to a heterochromatin heterochromatin as i had already told you in the previous lecture you need to go through those lectures that heterochromatin uh, is that chromatin which is condensed which is methylated and there is some modifications of the histones also during that process Another type of a nucleic acid which is uh, called as the ribonucleic acids and they are synthesized from uh, DNA template by three different kinds of polymerases and hence they have three different versions the messenger version, the tRNA version and the ribosomal uh, version. The modifications which happen in the RNA is actually to convert the immature type of an RNA which is just being synthesized by transcription to a mature form. The immaturity is lost and the maturation is done so that it will be uh, utilized for the protein synthesis machinery. So it has to attain a functional role so that the protein static information is uh, decoded from it and proteins are synthesized by the ribosomes or else it is used as a tRNA major tRNA which delivers the amino acid to ribosome. So both of these modifications whatever the modification happen in the RNA whether it is a mRNA or tRNA uh, or uh, as well rRNA uh, the modifications are extensive so that the final version of the RNA is uh, able to do its function of protein synthesis in one way or other. 
the there are many kinds of a modification which happen in the rna molecule focusing on uh, here the modification which happen in the mrna molecule you can see in the picture the uh, transcript which is just synthesized from the dna is immature it contains the exons and introns we know exons are the coding regions which are coded for the protein and introns are just non coding sequences so these needs to be uh, removed this process is called as splicing then there is a cap which is synthesized at the 5 prime end this is another type of a modification and the third type of a modification is polyadenylation which means the addition of a run of uh, poly a tail at the end of the mrna these uh, are necessary for the uh, maturation process and the mature mrna is then uh, uh, taken out of the nucleus to the cytosol or the ribosomal machinery where the uh, proteins are to be synthesized uh, from it so capping of a 5 prime of the mrna this is actually a co-transcriptional process that happens during the transcription of the mrna on the template state by the rna polymerase and when RNA polymerase synthesizes the mRNA on the template and when this mRNA becomes around 13 nucleotides in length, uh, the capping uh, process begins. And capping is uh, necessary. Why? Because the promoter clearance, remember from the transcription, the promoter has to be cleared by the uh, RNA polymerases. It doesn't happen until and unless this 5 prime end is saved or protected by the uh, the cap so the process is a co-transcriptional process and the promoter clearance happens only when this uh, five prime end is uh, protected by the cap this process uh, actually involves the addition of the seven methyl gonosine the seven methyl gonosine is called as the cap so hence the name capping of the five prime end and this uh, addition happens at as you already now know at the fry prime end of the synthesized mrna molecule so this process takes place in multiple steps first and foremost step is the removal of the five prime phosphate so the five prime phosphate of this uh, mrna which is just being synthesized is removed first by the phosphatase activity or um, you know, phosphohydrolase activity when this removal happens and it is taken prized out what remains is only the two phosphates there then gonadal transferase uh, activity uh, happens and what uh, it causes it causes the gmp moiety from the gtp to bind to this uh, phosphate and and the phosphate linkage is actually 5 prime 5 prime phosphate not the 3 prime 5 prime so this is the unusual kind of a phosphate which is made by this gonadal transferase this is resistant to the nuclease action and hence this end is protected from the uh, exonucleases uh, activity and hence the mra has a longer uh, half life than the mrna which is not capped so at the last the third reaction happens with the help of a 7 methyl transferase which transfers the methyl group from the adenosyl methionine to this uh, guanine at seventh position so m7 guanine is then formed this m7 m uh, um, uh, guanine or 7 methyl um, guanine is called as the cap and we will say that this is the first level of the cap which is uh, attached to the 5 prime end of the uh, synthesized MR. After this happens, after this cap is attached to the mRNA, the mRNA uh, tells the RNA polymerase to clear the promoter, and hence the promoter clearance is dependent upon the capping of the 5' prime end of the mRNA. This structure, which we just uh, went through, is called as cap zero, as you can see in this picture here also. This whole structure, which is linked through five prime, five prime phosphodiester bond, is called as cap zero. If, however, there is a further methylation at, for example, this position, two prime hydroxyl position of the first base or two prime hydroxyl position of the second base, then they are called as cap one or cap two. But cap one uh, and cap two is uh, provisional than the necessary one which is cap zero cap zero is necessary for the promoter clearance 
So as I already told you, this cap protects the five prime end of this mRNA from the ribonuclease action and it enhances the half-life. So, uh, mRNA is protected by this cap is actually by attaching it to the uh, another uh, complex called as the cap complex, uh, um, cap binding complex CBC. The CBC, what does CBC do? It does, it uh, gets attached to this cap and then uh, the whole complex attaches it to the uh, phosphorylated end carboxyl terminal end of the uh, RNA polymerase. So if when polymerase moves from the promoter, it takes it with itself the five prime end of the mRNA and hence uh, it protects it from the ribonuclease action. Identification of the mRNA is polyadenylation and it's also a co-transcriptional process usually at the end of it and it involves the addition of a long run of adenylate uh, residues to the modified 3' prime end of the mRNA which is here as you can see in the picture. A long run of adenylate residues are added. The run of this adenylate residues are around 80 to 250 uh, adenine residues long and you do usually the addition of the polyatal occurs at the specific site which is highly conserved like that of a tata box which was at the start the end is also having a conserved sequences where uh, specific proteins identify the sequence and then add the polyadenylation uh, run to this end this particular sequences which is uh, there is called as polyadenylation sequence which is specifically identified by the uh, certain factors this uh, is located at the three prime end of the mrna which is being synthesized and usually it has a sequence of aau aaa which is called as polyadenylation sequence this sequence is identified and then there is some other sequences also like five prime ya sequence and then there is a uh, cleavage sequence of uh, 5 prime GU sequence located downstream of this uh, sequence. All these sequences are called as polyadenylation or cleavage site sequences where uh, the specific kind of proteins bind and uh, enable the addition of the polyadenylate tail to the 3 prime end of the of a polyadenyl tail uh, happens with the help of uh, three different kinds of enzymes. First of the enzyme is the CPSF cleavage polyadenylation specificity factor which actually identifies the sequence polyadenylation sequence and it binds to it and then recruits the another uh, protein which is called as cleavage stimulation factor. This is a hydrolase enzyme which causes the uh, uh, nick or the breakage uh, at the specific uh, site so as to expose three prime end of the growing mrna to this three prime end the another enzyme poly a polymerase adds a run of uh, atps so when atps a run of atps are added uh, this is done by poly a polymerase to the mrna and hence the three prime end uh, mature mrna is formed by the polyation Another process of uh, modification in the RNA is the splicing of introns. As we already know that introns are the non-coding regions of the uh, premature RNA which need to be uh, prized up, uh, apart from the coding regions so that the final mature will have only exons. So these introns as uh, known are only present in between the um, exons, in between the coding regions as you can see in this picture. So you, so for the final version to be given to the ribosomes for the synthesis of proteins, this, these items and these non-coding sequences need to be removed. And this process is called as splicing, the removal of the introns from the primary transcript so as to generate mature RNA without any intron containing only exons in the final form. Usually there are two different types of uh, splicing uh, uh, which happens in uh, the removal of the introns. First is the self-splicing introns and second is the non-self-splicing introns. Those introns which can splice themselves out of the premature RNA and those which need certain kind of a, a complex or enzyme activity to prise them up out of the premature RNA. 
so hence the splicing is divided based on that self splicing intron self splicing introns are actually spontaneous kinds of an intron which uh, derive uh, the nucleophilic attack from either the gonosine or adenosine so uh, in case of a gonosine self splicing introns utilize guanine uh, nucleotide or nucleoside as a nucleophile which facilitates their accession from the primary transcript to generate the spliced rna and it is usually found in some nuclear and mitochondrial and chloroplast genes uh, gonosine provides the hydroxyl group as a nucleophile for the accession process as you can see in the accompanying picture gonosine is causing a uh, nucleophilic attack on the boundary between the exon 1 and intron and in turn it gets attached through phosphodiester bond to the intron and making the hydroxyl group at the 3 prime prime uh, 3 prime end of the exon 1 then this 3 prime um, hydroxyl group causes the nucleophilic attack on the another boundary between the intron and the exon linking the exon 1 with exon 2 and uh, in turn splicing the intron out uh, writing i already told you what happens uh, in this process in the picture i already mentioned that another group of the self splicing introns are adenosine dependent uh, introns uh, which are present uh, in some bacterial species However, the mechanism of the intron splicing is the same as that of the gonosine independence. The another difference here lies in the formation of a certain structure called as the branched laureate structure, which you can see here. It is because that this uh, adenosine, which is utilized as a nucleophile, is located within the intron itself. So it causes a nucleophilic attack here in the first boundary, then it forms a laureate kind of a circular kind of a um, moiety which is called as the branch laureate structure and then uh, the on the boundary or three prime boundary of the exon one the hydroxyl group which is formed will cause a nucleophilic attack on the another boundary linking the two exons together and uh, in turn uh, splicing the intron out and what we get is the mature spliced rna at the end class of introns which are not self splicing introns they dependent on certain uh, proteins and enzymes to do this kind of a function and it usually in, uh, involves those kind of introns which are present uh, among the nuclear mrna primary transcripts so the nuclear mrna are processed uh, by this mechanism and the intron accession involves the uh, certain kind of ribonucleoproteins which are which are sometimes also called as splicosome so splicing uh, is dependent upon rna protein complexes called as synerps or small nuclear ribonucleoproteins usually what has been seen is that five different kinds of uh, synerps are uh, involved in the uh, uh, splicing of introns from the mrna transcripts and they are u1 u2 u4 u5 and u6 and certain other accessory factors which are u2 af u2 af 56 and s1 protein so together the the five snurps and three accessory factors are uh, utilized for this splicing as you can see uh, see in the what happens is actually uh, the mechanism of intron accession begins with the binding of first U1 SNRP and then it is followed by U2 SNRP uh, and both uh, additions involve the utilization of the ATP energy and then U1 and U2 is uh, binded by the U2 AF and S1 at the 3 prime end of the intron. After the binding of these things, then what is done is that the recruitment of other U4, U5 and U6 proteins happen and together they form a uh, submolecular complex which is called as cyplosome. And usually this cyplosome contains five different kinds of RNAs and about 50 different proteins. So it is as complex as the ribosome in itself. And finally, help of uh, the laureate formation as you have seen in the adenosine dependent uh, self-splicing introns 
and the binding is as i already told you binding of the snps is facilitated by atp so this process is an atp dependent process and uh, usually the transcript is excised by you can see the whole scenario so the cap is already there which we already went bind it to the cbc via to cdt domain and then the cyclosome uh, also aggregates near this phosphorylated form of a ctd and uh, finally when the t prime end of this uh, is being uh, polyadenylated at the same time the cyclosome works and uh, excises the intron hence it's a uh, co trans moving to the another type of a um, rna molecule which is trna uh, this is also somewhat uh, modified uh, so that it will develop uh, into a final form which can serve as an adapter molecule to deliver amino acids to the ribosome machinery for the synthesis of proteins in case of trna in eukaryotes this mature three prime end which you can see in the mature trna picture here is not uh, synthesized during the transcription it is a post transcriptional process and usually uh, is generated by the action of the rnasp what is rnasp rnasp is actually a sub molecular assembly of a rna and a protein uh, peptide molecule which together form a ribonucleoprotein uh, similar to that of uh, snps in cyclosome this enzyme acts on a immature 3 prime end of the uh, trna transcript which i have not shown in the picture and the primary transcript is identified and its 3 prime nascent end is uh, located then this 3 prime nascent 3 uh, prime end is uh, generated so that the unnecessary segments which are beyond it are cleaved off when they are cleaved off the nascent 3 prime end is then uh, ripe for the addition of the three important things that is two cytosine and one adenine which are added from the ctp and atp and the activity which adds it is the trna nucleotidyl transferase activity this uh, activity generates the mature 3 prime end which is also called as amino acid acceptor arm end of the trna which accepts the amino acids and this is necessary for the initiation of translation process without the mature end the amino acids cannot be charged to trna molecule during the translation which uh, we will see in the translation process uh, in the days to come so this was it all about the post synthesis modifications of the dna and rna in the next lecture we will be focusing on the machine brain process of translation if you like the contents of the video you can order the book molecular biology and biotechnics from amazon it's available both in kindle and paperback format and do subscribe to my channel uh, for further uh, videos which i will upload in due time